Africa's faith is blooming. The Church is witnessing an ever more visible and vital participation of bishops and cardinals from Africa in the affairs of the Universal Church. South African Cardinal Wilfred Napier and Guinea's Robert Serra were specifically prominent during October's Synod of Bishops. Pope Francis will soon be setting foot on the continent, visiting Kenya, Uganda, and the Central African Republic at the end of November. Meanwhile, an outstanding African is being celebrated in the Church, Blessed Cyprian Tanzi, a priest and now proclaimed Nigeria's first blessed. This African cardinal in Rome had a very personal relationship with him. He is the first priest that I ever knew because he opened our parish, Dunukofia, at that time in 1940. And I was just a small boy of eight, nine years old. I hadn't known any other priest. He baptized me in 1941, my first confession at his hands, my first communion at his hands. I was his mass server in 1945. So, and he prepared me for confirmation. Therefore, I knew something about him. The school I attended, he lived in the area, in the grounds. So he was, he figured very much in my life. He worked first as a teacher. Later, he felt God's call to the priesthood. And at the end of his life, he entered a religious order and became a Trappist in England. But what was special about him was his unending zeal to spread the gospel. They were real sermons like John the Baptist. Then he was very zealous. He would hear confessions for long hours. You imagine that that area which he had as parish priest, single-handed, without assistant priest, I counted last year, 2014, and there are 63 priests in that area now, which he had as one parish. It is now 25 parishes. And he ran it with a push bicycle and a motorcycle second hand, which broke down often. He was very devoted for the spiritual good of the people. He trekked long distances. His cook had very little work because he ate very simple things. And there was only real decent food when there was a visitor. And he prayed. And he was very, very attentive to teaching these children. For the church in any nation, it is important to have local saints as witnesses that the faith has been enculturated in a true fashion. It is very important because the priest who comes up from the area, understands his people, not only their language, their culture, their mentality, their problems, their joys, their sorrows. And Father Cyprian Tansi, indeed his baptism name was Michael, but after 13 years as diocesan priest, he went to England and became a Trappist, and he took the name Cyprian. So he's now called Cyprian Michael Tansi. The problem the Blessed Missionary faced was the tension between local traditions and the Catholic faith. He managed to enculturate the faith by connecting the natural truths of people's reality to Christian concepts. <clears throat> Father Tansi himself came from a family of African traditional religion, which Europeans called animism, not a good name. Paganism, even worse, because the people believe in God, one God, and then in spirit, good and bad, and they honor the ancestors. That's not bad. It's very good preparation for Christianity. And it showed why they took on to the Christian religion, especially the sacrifice of the mass. Very strong idea in their religion. Sacrifice, priesthood, sacredness, God supreme. We must honor the supernatural world which we cannot see the sense of the sacred. So all that was excellent, but there were also negative elements. When there was a, an epidemic in the area, the people believed some of these old women were witches. They are the cause of the suffering. So they made them drink some poison, and then if they died, they said, you see now, they are guilty. So in that way, so that didn't orient Father Tans in favor of local customs. Cardinal Arinze, hopes for further miracles so that Cyprian Tanzi can be called a saint soon. Regarding Pope Francis's trip to Africa, the Cardinal said that he would bring encouragement and hope to the people, as he represents the Church as a whole. When I heard of it, it brought me joy. 
and it is thanks to the Holy Father that he is ready to visit these three countries. Possible hopes, the Holy Father encourages the local church. He encourages the bishops, the priests, the religious, the lay faithful, who are in any case 99% of the church. They see the church near them. As when John Paul II visited Nigeria in 1982, one priest said, we are the center of the church today in the whole world, in this town for six hours. 